It is very important for us to know who we are and what this world is and what this universe is. All things that are surviving for a period of time. After that it has to get decayed, decomposed. Why we are here, why we are born, and what nature we have to be in approximation with the nature around us. Whether we are all living peacefully, comfortably, free from grief or not. This is very important for us now to understand whether I am my body or I am my life with life force in it or I am my soul. What is the difference between the body, the mind, the soul and the person who I am? I have my life force that conducts me. My life force tells me I have to come here to my mind. Then I have that feel I, have, I must come here. I have already come here. My, my body only followed my will to come here. My field has come here already. The field is guiding me towards this place and I have been here. My body followed my field. That field is the life force, the propulsive force, the conducting force. What is that field? I have a soul in me that tells me what is right, what is wrong. To come here is right. To be humble before you is right. To be posing proudly before you is wrong. To talk to you specifically on the matter, clearly, if I know what is what, then that is right. If I do not speak to you that which, about that which I am myself not sure about, then it is wrong. So many things, right and wrongs, are there around us. And within us is the ability to distinguish between what is right and what is wrong. When I find something right, I will do it, I will speak it, I will offer it in my mind. When I feel something is wrong, I will discard it, remove it from my mind. I will never entertain it. When I was studying in MBBS, that is my medical graduation, undergraduation, I knew that medicine is wrong. It cannot cure any disease. Rather, it can aggravate the existing problem and give more problems also that will stay in your body forever and it will be transmitted to the offsprings also for generations to come. This cannot be entertained in me. I have my feel now. I am doing a wrong thing by studying medicine. Why should I study medicine? Why should I continue medicine? Should I be a dropout from medical college was my sense then. Then I came to know having come in, let me complete it, let me know the falsehood of medicine completely before I can step out and speak against this medicine. So from the third year onwards, another three and a half years, I went through my internship also and I ran into many problems with my professors because I was against medicine. He said he, you, you would fail in your examinations if you continue to talk like this. So I had to shut my mouth up. Until such time, I passed through the exams. After passing through the exams, I continued my practice, general practice for six and a half years, killing most of the people in the name of medicine. I know. I am giving side reactions for each and every symptom. I am giving one medicine that causes multiple side effects. It is not actually side effects. It is giving new diseases. That's a misnomer. Side effects is a misnomer. So that, that you'll you be thinking like it is something like that once you stop the medicine, it will go away. It is not so. It stays in your digestive system and from there it is removed to your 
various distant part of your bodily tissues. What is not digested cannot be eliminated. Any life force, the food source that we eat from the life force that can be digested by the digestive system. Anything that is not having the life cannot be digested in the digestive system. So it will be grasped by the blood vessels and then circulated through the body wherever there is a weakness, it will be lodged there in the entire bodily system. Every tissue, anything that is non-biological food, no life force in it, will be absorbed into the bloodstream, taken to various distant parts, vital organs in our body, gets lodged there. It will not be digested. It stays inert for some time without reaction. After some time, it begins to react because it is a foreign body. Anything that is biological is applicable for us. Anything that is non-biological, that's chemical, no life in it, will not be digested. It is considered as foreign body. It stays there forever. It may turn out to be toxic also later on. This is the reason why we are suffering from a particular disease. Say, for example, a knee joint pain. A star is a small, miniature, foreign body sticking to some deep, place inside the bone or the joints. Later on, it becomes a real foreign body. Later on, it turns out to be toxic. My bones are eroded there. Reaction develops against any toxic substance, the antibodies. When there is an antibody antigen, that is a foreign body and the antibodies collide, the disturbance caused here, the vibrations caused here is the pain. The pain is a symptom that indicates to us there is a foreign body, there is an inimical substance in your body, the system that should be removed from the body. Long, undigested, uneliminated toxin is there in the body and then the antibodies develop over a period of time of inertness. This combination, the Foreign body on the one side and the antibodies on the other side when they collide. The antibodies try to remove, digest now forcibly. This not unwanted thing, not so much unwanted thing. It is necessary this antibody reaction must develop and the force must be transferred to the body and this antibody energy system must traverse the system from head to toe, from skin to bones and it must circulate effectively so that it protects you from future illnesses, future diseases, any other foreign body, just one single foreign body in me, it is not just once against one single foreign body, the antibodies are developing. It has got a multivarious effect, these antibodies. It will not have only to that particular part alone. Overall, rejuvenating the entire defense system in my body. This defense energy and the inimical energy, disease energy, they come back the resultant turbulence set up in the atmosphere, that is the energy atmosphere of the interior of the body, causes turbulence and malaise. I feel weak. And the part from where the turbulence developed, that causes pain. Overall, I am not all right. You allow the foreign bodies to be totally removed, digested, eliminated from the system, and allow the antibodies to act against it. You can simplify this antibody as defense energy. And the antigenic, antigenic body is the enemy, disease energy. So the defense energy definitely would fight the disease energy to remove the existing disorder in a particular portion where it is lodged long before because of the undigested particles in the food. The medicine now that we are giving is totally chemical, indigestible. This will never be removed by the body unless an antibody antigen reaction takes place. You have a normal temperature of 98.4 degrees heat. 98.4 degrees heat is an energy. It is energy. Heat is nothing but energy, active energy. For my normal physiological function, this energy is sufficient for me. 
but in an abnormal situation, an abnormal force is necessary to combat the disease force, defense force. As it's a defense force, it must have more energy, more virulence against the disease. It builds up. Slowly it builds up to fight against the disease. An optimal temperature is reached to fight the disease off. The combat force is so severe, the turbulence setup is so severe, and I am not able to bear the pain. That is the point you are going to get the cure. When there is a pain, increase in the pain, that is the point when you are going to get cured. But that's the point at which we are taking the medicine, that is the painkiller. It just relieves the pain alone, removes the pain alone. It benumbs my system from receiving the pain symptom. That's all. It doesn't relieve the pain. It makes me not to receive the pain. My nervous system is benumbed. This is pain reliever. It has for, for some time, like four, four hours to five hours, maximum six hours. After that, the medicinal effect comes down. Again, the pain starts. Within this four to five hours of no pain, you start moving the limbs as if there is no pain. You are intoxicated. You have lost your senses and sensations. Pain reliever is an intoxicant. If you know the depth of it, what the pain is, the pain is due to the defense and disease force fighting against each other. The more the severe pain, you will be very happy that the more is the intensity of the defense force. Your fighting capacity is so high, only is a matter of time, if you only be patient, this defense force will come back, put down the disease force, and thereafter the pain starts receding. That is the starting point for all the disease to end. But at the height of temperature, you will take either anti-fever medicine or anti-pain medicine. When the disease is still there, you are giving anti-fever medicine. That means you are removing the defense energy, that temperature you are removing. What will happen now? If the warmth or the Heat is the energy. If that energy is necessary to fight the disease in extraordinary circumstances and the defense force is building up in its ability to fight the disease off, to put it down, the resultant vibration created by the combat between the defense force and disease force causing the pain and overall body pain with increase in the temperature. Is it to be respected or to be put down? Allopathy does not know this at all. It is an inebriated medicine, intoxicating medicine. It just removes the pain and fever when the disease is still there in its highest form, making you feel that you are as if you are all right. Is it intoxication or not? You are half sensible, half sensitive. It is indispensable now to dispense with, dispose it of. The medicine has a cure to you as a healer. Totally. 1986, I stopped taking medicine. And lots of people who have understood this. No one took medicine until this day. And no one felt sick until this day. We do not know what a disease is now. We are least bothered about the disease because our defense force is most perfect. Whenever we have a disease, you must understand that defense force must develop and it has already developed. We know the symptoms that's the reason why we say we have disease. The symptom is nothing but the vibration caused by the combat between the defense and disease force. Repeatedly, I have to say this because fever is an important source to rely upon that our diseases are on the way out. Very important. And it has to be respected. How it should be respected until the fever subsides, we cannot disturb it. 
98.4 degrees is our body temperature. We understand that. That is heat. That is for activity. Normal physiological activity. Very normal physiological activity. In a situation where there is a disease and defense, there is a fighting force developing. That means the temperature is increasing. All my physiological energy is now converted to defense energy too. My physiological energy, once converted to defense energy, all my physiological organs slow down in its activity. For example, when I develop a fever, beginning to develop a fever, I lose my appetite. I lose my digestion. I have no thirst for water. I cannot even sit. I have to lie down because my energy is now diverted to defense to fight the disease off. It is all natural happening. So I have to lie down, take rest as much as possible until such time I am recovering the defense force back to my physiological force, energy. I have to wait. Once the physiological energy returns, that means the disease is out. It takes hardly one or two days, maximum 20, 24 to 48 hours. After that, you don't suffer from disease or fever from any, any other diseases. The fever is the first symptom and the pain is the second symptom or mixture of both. This indicates that my defense force is building up. Beautiful sign. There are two people, okay, in terminal disease. One is lying down totally painless. Another is in pain. He writhes in pain. Who is better off between the two? Two patients. One is suffering from excessive pain. Another is not having any pain and he is lying very idle, not moving. Who is in worse condition? Who is better, in better condition? The one who writhes in, writhes in pain cries in pain or the same disease another person is having but is totally listless. Who is severe now in affliction? The person the thing in pain is better off. The pain gone totally, he is senseless and listless, he is very dangerous position. The pain is important that you are going to survive for longer days. The pain relieved from you is an indication you are going to die sooner. Try to understand this point. Allopathy survives only with the fever medicine and the pain medicine. Without these two, allopathy empire is gone. Totally crashed. They are inebriating you, intoxicating you with their medicines, benumbing your sensibilities and sensitivities. All your sensations are relieved from you, removed from you, benumbed. Now you have no way to understand what pain is and where pain is. You will not be able to do anything. Slowly you will be crippled. Every time you take a fever medicine, the disease is increasing. At the height of fever, my disease is contained. So much of fever is necessary, temperature is necessary to contain my pains and the disease. Now I am giving an anti-fever medicine, removing the entire energy, defense energy. What happens is, without pain, without fever, my disease is silently progressing from the depth. The silent increase in the nature of my disease, underground, spreading his tentacles, traversing my body through and through. Finally, I become a bundle of disease. It should not happen. Further, you must understand, you cannot take anything biological, non-biological, but take only biological as food. You cannot take medicines because biological. You cannot take pesticides. You cannot, be, like, like Coca-Cola, Pepsi, all those things, where Pepsi, pesticides are included. You never take. All these chemicals get lodged inside. Not even vitamin C, that is non-biological. Not even vitamin B complex, totally non-biological. There's no life in it. You created it. Whatever you create, there's no life in it. Whatever God has created, there is life in it. 
we come to know now we have to understand what god is some people may believe in god some people may not believe in god the god we pronounce but the existence of a power superior to is already there is there in a power a power existing above you that created you from nothingness to this form there is a power above us that we do not know i am hale and hearty now suddenly i become ill i do not know why i became ill i am looking forward to the reasons the causative factor what caused me the pain what caused me the disease definitely i have no idea why i contracted the disease the disease came to me i did not invite the disease yes or no nobody invites the disease but the disease come to us once the disease has come to us our senses are lost it is impossible for us to know why the disease has come to us and from where it came and what is the reason for my disease it is impossible once i am ill to understand this no causative factor can be found out if i am aware of myself while i am hale and hearty then it is possible even the slightest difference in my status of health i can understand what is happening within me why it has happened all those things but since we have no insight we have only the external vision we believe this we believe this we believe this everything that i see i believe everything that i don't see i cannot believe i can see i am hale and hearty what makes me feel that way this is because i have everything intact in the form i have created naturally once there is a difference once there is a defect in it i injure myself with it with non biological things i believe in the money i believe in the food which one you want non biological is the money the biological need is the food the food is created by who by your plowing the land or because of the power in the land in the sand in the grains of sand the liveliness the life force is created the cleaving of the grain seed and then bring out the ears and then the grains for food and then the plantation and vegetations it is the living force the life force in the sand or you are cleaving it no but what makes it cleave and what makes it grow and finally how your flower and then the unripe seed becomes a fruit and then it gives us the smell the sight the juiciness inviting us towards it to feed on it feed on it what causes all these things there is a connection between my heart and the natural beauty i am speaking to you you are hearing through the waves sound waves and i am speaking to you looking at you you know the my mind level that is the mind wave i am breathing with calmness while i'm speaking to you there is a breathing wave i am not speaking to you without liveliness there is a gesture involved there is a grimace involving my facial expressions pure language monotonous language is insufficient to carry my whatever i have in my mind a communication impossible to make you feel what i feel language is falling short of expression language is falling short of any sort of communication you must be alive inside to speak or communicate to the heart i am not giving any communication to the ears it doesn't go to the brain it comes to the mind finally we are being mindful now we are relieved of the all the documents the proof of our scientific existence is the document what i see i believe this is science if i cannot see i cannot believe that is nonsense non science is nonsense they consider it so when i don't see you mindfully attentive to me i can see from your face whether you like me or you hate me whether you are sitting here for the sake of decency all those things i know by looking at the face the face gives the expression that speaks a lot than what you speak communication this
face expressions and everything your attentiveness in attentiveness everything comes to me comes to my heart i feel here that it is a good platform for me to speak whether to extend my speech or to cut short my speech i can see from your face faces all those things what these communications are heart must be opened up your mind must be clear you should not have any pride you should not be proud before the people you should not become arrogant you cannot be over rejoicing because you are given a welcome by some other people when they garland you they make you proud but we have not garlanded the person who has garlanded us why so we thought we are superior to him all of us should have jointly garlanded this to the person who garlanded us we have not done so a little bit of pride is there so we don't want this now i remove it i didn't remove it there and nobody should be in this way greeted to elevate them in their pride cannot be done this is how you are soothing giving soothe soothing comfort to the heart to the mind to the soul finally we will know what soul is what mind is then what the life force is if i am suffering from a worry will this impede my life force or not i have deep seated worry in me my life force will be put down or not it will be weakened or not definitely it will be weakened my life force will be weakened when i am deeply in worry don't be a worried person have peace is this a thing to be obtained procured from the shops or it is something as a grace from the almighty power must enter into my heart means when i ask this question we would say it is the peace from the outside source from the resource from the almighty it has to come to me i have lost it because i wanted this i wanted that i don't everything that i see that is charming to me enchanting things i am charmed into i will never like any of these things but i love what i have has peace in my mind the moment i say that it is beautiful that means i want it i desire for it but i have a wish inside this peace cannot be disturbed at any point of time the first disturbance is the hastiness towards what i desire for don't be in haste don't get attracted to any of the surroundings that is created all are going to die one day everything created will die one day and before our eyes this plantation is growing it will die one day i have no desires for it anything that is dying i will not be interested in it anything that is favoring my peace all time peace i favor it i want to lead a good life you need a good life when i say this to you you will accept it or you will say no have a good life from this moment onwards will you say yes or no yes that means you are leading a bad life today but we are proud of the life we are living today i am already hit this, i have already hit the ceiling because i am proud whatever i am living is sufficient for me no you lead a better life good life is your life cause your life rose your life no shortage of any good things that i want all the good is the feel but we want goods to lead a better life between good and goods the choice is yours you want goods or good goods means all the things that will die that has nothing as life force in it every goods that you create that you produce has no life force if my heart goes for it my heart goes as a strength to survive when we started we talked about the life force and the force that doesn't have life that will be reacted against the food that you are taking if there is anything chemical in there that is you created the chemicals it has got no life in the life 
fitnessness and life force combined together it becomes toxic good and bad i have a good feeling i have a bad feeling i want good i want bad either you need good or you need bad i want both you are a confused person it is better you die rather than living in confusion without in knowing what you require require at least basic minimum is you require good thing and you reject the bad thing i want both speak only righteousness don't speak falsehood don't lie speak the truth no no i will speak the truth i will speak lies also don't combine you are confused person you cannot understand good and bad once you get used to this there is the the, the distinguishing ability in the heart is dying it has gone totally don't combine any good and bad right and wrong justice and injustice cannot be combined let it stay clear let the heart have the distinguishing ability all the time then by the look of it we will know whether i need it or i don't need it whether i am lying or speaking the truth whether i am justified or unjustified whether i have sense sensitivity i have or i am sensitive to people to the things around don't be sensitive be sensible full of life and hope must be here i have you need hope and confidence in your life towards what towards all good things not all good things all good don't include things there combining good and bad together good has got life in it things have got no life in it good things don't combine i want good speak your heart out think your heart and you will be contacted by the heart that the truth that is inside the truth is not having shape or form or size the justice again it is based on the senses and judgment and you need hope for tomorrow definitely that hope is not a procurable thing from the shops it is there within as a living force a conducting force to put you you put your life on the better pedestal by the moment by the day hope for it and the hope is important i have to believe in that tomorrow will be a better day i hope so i believe so this takes you tomorrow to a better life today throughout the day time i have worked hard enough and finally the evening comes that tiredness overpowers you you cannot think any more as the darkness comes i am totally free from all my physical works or all my duties of the day time and i go to sleep why to get the blissness to remove all my tiresome feel inside not in the body in the mind i am to be relieved of all my worries of the day tomorrow i hope a beautiful tomorrow will be dawning upon me this is how i believe and we go to sleep you are not doing anything and you are not conscious about yourself in your sleep you have to be free from your relations your business people your friends your savings your all your worries are gone all taken away that's the reason why you are sleeping without even knowing who you are you are totally freed from all the debris in the mind you are comfortably sleeping the moment you get up you are so refreshed so, so rejuvenated you are full of life and now you are facing the world a new world is born to you not the yesterday's world a new light is in your mind you cannot see with the yesterday's gloominess that part of sense must reach your mind now i must be full of blooming beauty inside my heart my feel should not be constrained with any restraints of the things that is seen in the world and nothing should distract me or attract me what i have i cannot leave the moment i desire something a part of my life source is gone there that is dying or already dead anything that is created dying the moment a child is born i am happy because he is going to die one day when he dies no sorrow if i know and i understand that the moment the child is born it is going to die and you are 
celebrating the birthdays first second third countdown has started and they're celebrating happy birthday that's happy death day or happy birthday i am edging towards my death every birthday is a countdown to my death day i am rejoicing at the birthdays no it is a time to reflect upon yourself what you had done how much you have to improve my days are shortened now many many more happy returns should not come on this day it must wait until i complete my stint in this world is it a celebration time or a reflecting time every birthday introspecting time it is a countdown to death you have to be very careful you cannot rejoice on that day but reflect upon yourself and understand my death is nearing what for i am created where i am now leading myself to and the peace is gone here i need certain celebrations to pick up my peace no peace has got no with rejoicing nothing with rejoicing rejoicing is entirely different that takes your soul out i am becoming blinded to the existence because of the pomp and show my reality is gone you have to be calm quiet peaceful introspect and think about yourself how to evolve yourself from the present position evolving is necessary by mind mind is here that particular mind is here somebody will say scientists will say it is here no brain is only a physical organ mind is a physical non physical entity it is a being that cause me to be a human being every word be is here the moment i conceive of something an entity an abstract form as goodness for me i believe in it how and where from i can get it i do not know suppose i have a fever or a terrible disease as the doctor said diagnosed say cancer or a kidney failure what does it mean the moment they diagnose a kidney failure what does it mean you will die they diagnose a cancer what does it mean you will suffer and die they say you got any disease that means it should be chronic until you die a yes, ordinary knee joint pain and the part dies and replace it with a newer joint or you die with that diagnosis means to tell you that you will not be cured you will die with the disease or the disease will until such time the disease kills you no not even a single nose block can be cured it starts the nose breathing problem any child the moment it is born it is pristine pure after we have started looking after the child the child now becomes sick first sickness is the indigestion and the nose problem running nose we do not know how to rear up the child you will feed the child the moment it is born that is its food or you will give water to the child what does your inner source say when to give the child food and when to give the child the water when there is a thirst the child will cry it has no other language to speak to you when it has got hunger for food it cries how do you know whether the child is crying for its hunger or whether the child is crying for its thirst for thirst you have to give only water if you give food in digestion stable up when there is appetite you give only water then she becomes undernourished how do we know when to give water when to give the milk the child's only communication is cry now we have to introspect whether i am fit for rearing up the child or i am unfit i say i am unfit now the feel inside the wish inside is it should be brought up hale and hearty without diseases that is my only concern for the child no disease should strike the child not even an in, uh, indigestion or a loose motion or any pain that it should disturb the child or even a running nose a yeah, fever nothing should afflict my child this is my wish yes or no 
do you know how to rear up the child in this manner? Do not know. But that wish contacts the child. Because you have concern for the child, the child sees you. There is in every, if the face has got something to speak to the child. And when the child sees the mother, comfortable face and concerned face, the child is a little bit uneasy. When the child sees the face of the mother, very much concerned about it. That facial expression put down the heart of the child. But you are blooming with happiness and peace while rearing the child. That gives another feel to the mind of the child. I am cuddling the child with full of hope. Every nerve has got the vibration. As the face can give you an expression, every nerve, every single unit of, the cell, unit of our body, the cell, it has got its mind. Suppose there is a small vitro here, a pain here at the base of the nail, and it is paining. The pain is here or here? It is not so much paining. But my mind says, how long I have to bear with it? Why can't it go? After such a small thing, it causes so much concern to my mind. I am not at all happy keeping this. It must be removed. It must go. It must go. Your mind says or the finger says. The finger says and the mind receives and the mind responds to that. I must go. Even if it is so trivial, it must go. I cannot stand it. After all, a little finger, little fellow. In its corner, there is a small boil. That causes concern to your mind and you must reflect that it will go. Then it goes. Likewise, there is a child. There is a vibration from Every part of your body, from your sight, from your feel, and from your breathing, and from what you have in your mind, it is passed on to the child. The child must become all right. If this is your hope, and this is your belief, and you know pretty well that this will go, if only I just don't disturb the child. And that feel, that confidence, that grit must be there in the mind to transfer what I have to the distant, remote place, wherever the person is concerned about his ill health. The moment somebody phones you and says, I am ill, I am not well, what you are going to do now? One thing is there in the mind, she must be all right. That is the force, the living force, the godly force inside our body, inside our mind, inside the heart. If you think that it won't go, something is wrong over there, then your heart is fluttering. Your mind is not, your brain is not fluttering, your hands are not fluttering, but your heart is fluttering first, in the first place. But things are nearing as if might be dying. Then the whole energy is lost and even your hands are now beginning to shake. You are not able to stand. That worry, the extreme part of worry is fear and the extreme part of fear is the shock. Between the fear and shock, you have the trembling nose. You are deeply depressed. That depression causes trembling. You must be very strong in the mind in good things. Hope for good. Believe in that good. Be composed all the time. Nothing is going to wrong, go going to get wrong in you or nothing is going to get wrong with the person about whom you are concerned. So much is the steadiness that you will have. If only you can Put your heart in steadiness. What you want, what you wish for is most important. Then what you think that it, it could happen this way or that way. It is not the will of the, the ultimate power, the almighty power. The almighty power is there watching you very intently, what is going on inside. The moment some disturbance comes to you, have peace is the first word from the almighty power. That is the godly power enters here. There are good powers and evil forces all around us. We believe, we believe in shaitans, evil forces, the satanic forces we believe. Likewise, we believe in the good forces also. We don't believe the good force as we believe the satanic forces. Which one to be believed, which one not to be believed. The evil forces are the good force. Against one good, so many evils would come. Still, those 
Any number of evils cannot match one good. Good versus goods. God versus gods. Truth versus falsehood. To suppress one truth, so much of falsehoods must be aimed against it. Yet, the truth will stand up one day. The truth will not be put down by any amount of falsehood you throw upon it. So, God versus the satanic forces. You believe in the godliness. It is not a thing. It is not having shape or size or form. It is all pervading, composed energy that creates. It will not be put down. A creative force is there in the mind that causes my mind to be at peace and composed. My soul receives the godliness. This is the base and the best part of our frame, the heart. Your soul is there deeply lying in that receives the message of godliness, good things. This is transformed to the mind, delivered to the mind. This is the word of God. Now the mind is second entity, unseen entity. Mind receives it and feels. That feeling is communicated now through the language I know. I must be all right. To whom you say you must be all right to the persons, they would not know how to make you all right. They would not know what is good or bad. They would not be able to dispel the bad and procure the good. There is no way at all. You wish for it, it will come to you. You wish for the evil things, that is there already. Oh, I have got some terrible disease. This doctor has told me, if you take it to the mind, you are taking these satanic forces inside. Before even the doctors say, the godly word is there, get cured, get well. Which one you will take? Distinguishing ability must be there in the heart all the time. That distinguishing ability is most important for my survival. Without any disease, without any afflictions, without any disturbance to the heart, keep it up in the mind all the time. Be mindful. If I am speaking with arrogance, then you will know that I am out of my mind. You will even ask me, are you out of your mind? Then what is that mind then? To be believed or not to be believed? It is there or not? The communication, the language itself is created by God. The godly feeling must be communicated to the people. I am trying my best to communicate what I have as feel without things. In abstractness. To make you understand. In abstractness. That's a language. Communicating language. I'm not speaking of anything else except in abstract entity, in abstract way, you know already. There is a mind, it is there already. I am speaking to you. You know, yes, something is there. When I say you should be all right, yes, I should be all right. Where from, I get, where from can I get it? I cannot get it from anywhere. But you need it or not, yes, I need it. What is this? I cannot get it anywhere, but I need it. Where from it came? It is a thing or not? It is not a thing, but it is a feel. Where the feel is, it's in the heart. Is it there in the brain? No. When I am jittery, my heart flutters, not the brain flutters. It is in the heart, the center point, the epicenter is in the heart. You go for grabbing the goodly feeling given to you, delivered to your mind from the soul, then you are cured. Then you got what you want. Any disease anywhere, you feel here the word of godliness, the godly word, you must get well. You believe in it, remove the suspicion, that means remove your education, remove your knowledge. Education is the satanic force here. Because you believe in your education more than what you believe, what you want here. Negating it, negativing it. I know it cannot be. What you know from what you have seen, from your experiences, you know that it cannot be cured. But what is there inside? I must be cured. Take this for example. Suppose somebody says you will be dying of this disease. But what is here here? You should not die. You should get well. Right? If you believe in your knowledge, if you believe in your education, remove this feel. I will, only I will die must be here. You should survive. You should get well. Should not be here. Can you do that? But on the other hand, I can try removing the evil words of doctors that I will not die. 
even if you say you will die the whole world says you will die you will never say that i will die you will speak the good word between good and bad words it is about tomorrow you will die or you will survive is about tomorrow why don't you believe in the good instead of bad thing we are so arrogant to accept the goodness in us dispelling the bad because i have knowledge knowledge must be weighed against the truth i believe in the knowledge within the force within the satanic force i keep it in mind i will die and doctor has given the date 3 months 6 months in 3 to 6 months i will die definitely you will die because what you have in the heart will happen then you will say the doctor is so brilliant he said exactly the time and i was dead so this spell remove destroy the ignorance of knowledge and education what is intuited here believe this is very beautiful to you go by the intuition don't go by the institution never fall into sickness believing in education education is satanic to the core they do not know anything abstract they know whatever is visible to the eyes that is knowledge mind the education doesn't know the soul they do not know the life force they do not know they only see you as an animal a social animal they coined that word also to human being social animal no a man is the superior creation superior most creation of all the creations because he has a be in it everything good should be there for him that is why he is a being he is an entity a man is a human being not animal being he cannot be an animal he is well above because he has got a mind to receive the god's god's words from the soul and the soul is the possession of god he takes possession of your soul finally and therein is all the goodly word and your mind because of the debris of the knowledge deep inside your, your your heart you have brought this knowledge to the heart to the mind so any good thing is opposed by the mind this is the disease force and defense force now the defense force the lively force is there already in the soul delivering its liveliness to the mind there in the debris of knowledge whatever visible to be accepted whatever not visible to be, not to be accepted this is accepting god or not accepting god not willing to accept the god accepting god is most important god is not anywhere it is there he speaks to you who can speak the word when the all the whole world knowledge says you will die which one speaks to you now that you will survive you must get well what speaks to you which is which one is the good energy which one is the satanic energy between the two you should get well you should you will die die from the human beings you should get well from nowhere which is good which is bad now the good is there even as the evil is spoken to me the good is there which I, which one i must dispel discard it but unfortunately i take the knowledge closer to me and discarding the words of good here i am dispelling god who has the capacity to cure you when the whole world is expecting you to die who has the capacity a superior power call that god don't give name allah jesus permal krishna don't give name give the name now the attribute of god the protector the curer there is none but he i am worshiping right worshiping what all the good things when god says that you should be all okay you should be all right or oh, the healer i am calling not oh allah not oh jesus he has got the attribute all good attributes belong to him you call by the name of the one that you need as the deepest wish in you his will is the order and that becomes your wish in your heart you should become all right is a command or a request that is spoken to my mind from the soul from deep inside the soul says to me you should get well 
Is it a command or an order? Is it a command or a request? Yeah, a command. His will is the command. And that comes to me as a beautiful wish in my mind. How subtle the good nature is, the good power is. A command comes to, us, come to you as your deepest beautiful wish. Yes, I must get well. Are you going to revere this or not? Yes, I should have revered it. But what did he do? I believe in the education, the debris in the mind that is opposing the good blessing of God comes to my mind, delivered from his soul. Believe in the soul. Believe in God. All the goodly things. Don't entertain your mind with the knowledge of the people. Dispel the education. It is to be despised and thrown away. So have hearts. Have the mind intact. And let the mind be submissive to the soul as the command is being delivered to your mind from the soul deep inside. When the soul and mind come in unison, you are cured. Let brain not work. Your solacement is there. You are a refined person now. The more you discard your knowledge and believe in the abstractness of the command of God, His will be done on you if you are but that wish in you. Without tainting it with your knowledge and education. No man is to be believed by his knowledge. A man can be my companion by his mind, the purity of mind, submissiveness to the soul. Believe in the soul, that is the God's abode, and the temple is here, mosque is here, church is here, nowhere else. He is speaking to you from within. Surrender to him. Don't become head hearty. No, I will die. It will not come. I will not believe. Don't say that. You need it. Even at the point of death, you will be wanting it. How great if I survive. You should have believed that before, not now. When you lost all your hopes about your life, now believing in God, definitely God is not there to help you. What are we discussing now? You don't take care of him, he doesn't take care of him, she doesn't take care of me, I don't take care of anybody. Everybody is an individual. Then God loves you. God has brought you all together, brought us all together. We are not coming closer. If you stay close to God, God is there to keep the entire universe close to you, at your feet. You don't go and conquer the moon and stars. The stars and moon are already delivering its substance and its liveliness to the earth upon which your feet is there, the highest of all creations for the sake of human being. Be steady now. Be steady in studying the mind that when the will of God comes to you as a beautiful wish, none can touch it except God can deliver it. Believe in that. There's no disease in you, no affliction in you. Weighing between the food and the money Give importance to the food. God delivers you the food. Just giving away the food or procuring the food is not consuming. Like Consume it. It must be digested properly. It must give you the refreshment, energizing it to the energy to the mind, not to the physical strength. Your physical strength you believe in or your mental strength you believe in for your entire life. Physical strength or mental strength. But you base all your directions to physical health, physical fitness. What happens to mental fitness? I will be very strong. One shocking news is sufficient. I will be crippling under my feet. I will die down. Which one is important now? Mental fitness. Don't become mental. Be fit in mind level. Doing meditation, doing yoga, all physical exercise. What is meditation? Trying to understand between good and bad and then siding with the good, that's all. What more do you want? What are you going to think by folding your legs and putting your hand like this and thinking something else, forgetting about everything when so many things are inside? What is meditation now? Distinguishing between good and bad and siding with the bad, siding with the good and discarding the bad. That's it. Forget about the bad. Things are happening inside from you now. 
meditation is not to be thought everything should be coming from the nature inherent nature intuited it will be made you will be made to remember and you will be reminded of that is intuition it is not something comes from outside as a new thing it is already there you are reminded of now whatever i am telling you it is applicable to your mind that means i am reminded of something i am not saying anything new to you i am a writer now i am saying anything new to you or i am just reminding what you know already when you say yes means that you know already even before i i say you know it already i am only reminding you it's only a remembrance so i am not here teaching you anything i am only here to make you remember what you have forgotten that's all let me end up here if you have any questions you can ask i don't want to bore you